Okay guys, I'm back with more Kano Shoujo. In the last episode, we went to the nurse's office. And yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Well, we talked with those two before. Anyway, the dorm building is a big, <laughs> is big and made of red brick. Oh boy. <clears throat> Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Oh. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. Yeah, I guess so. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small collar... What? Corridors? Corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seem to have a toilet and shower as well as four rooms. <clears throat> About hallway down the hall. <laughs> About hallway down, yes. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The nameplates on the room adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello, is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements. <clears throat> then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, best spectacled, if I read that right, <laughs> boy is standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noises are almost touching. His breast stinks of garlic. He saw Nakai. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup dude, the name's Kinji. Ah, hi. I take Kinji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. <laughs> your parents? You sure? Because it could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> this out of place proverb is left hanging a tears awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. Sh he shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he saw. Me, I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? <laughs> he thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. With that, he turns fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. <sighs> Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room impersonal like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the front of my bed at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closest is... The closest? The closet <laughs> is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi, Hichan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have, then there would be something to do. 
it's still too early, but I put the note down on the desk and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for waiting to read whenever I have nothing to do. <laughs> the restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day today, I still am, I think. Damn, I have to distract myself somehow so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... <laughs> pills. A pile of medications neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside and read the glued-on pharmacy label. Sao Nakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> it's kind of twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain, and after that I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and lock sha long, not lock, shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more, more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night <coughs> beckons me to sleep and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. Hmm. I wonder what's gonna happen next. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I? This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things <coughs> around here remind me that indeed it's me who's supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop <coughs> out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking of the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. <laughs> the artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh clo cloth Case my back is a good but unnatural one. It feels like a school uniform as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things too. So far this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter and she's in this sweeping sign language gestures. Well I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal. But I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decide to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know I should ask her. <laughs> What's with that face? <laughs> she crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, sorry, Shachan, is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, John. My first thought is that <clears throat> means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. 
oh that's right everyone is encouraged to join a club a lot of people do so because there isn't anything else to do there are also school events like the festival coming up in a few days almost every student in the school tends to help out with it doing whatever so you actually transferred at in a, uh, in at transferred in at a busy time all right maybe you can help out too sure what's this festival about Misha freezes Wahaha, I don't know, hey John. Oh, what? Oh, I clicked by accident. <laughs> Hello. She, start, she starts signing desperately at Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grand wall flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Huh? Okay. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's word out at me with a dis <laughs> disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud, I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival would, will inevitably change with time. Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> The teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shouts a pointed gaze at us. Sh he shoots, not shouts. How can he shout a gaze? <laughs> Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though brushing it off with a care. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shachan. <clears throat> what? <laughs> what? That's right, Shachan. Are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchange between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other, other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizun look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her up at me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark haired girl go. Why doesn't she say anything? Hey, Chan, is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me looking after the girl who left? No, nothing. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. Yay, wahaha. Okay, hey, John. I just get whatever. <laughs> the rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizuna looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Yes, it is, Hachan. It's impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so she doesn't can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. <laughs> I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really... <coughs> Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, it's, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I've never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Are you sure, Hachan? Very sure. 
Ha ha ha, you're wrong, Hichan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, that's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. All right, all right, 15 minutes. So I'll see you guys next time for more Kaiwa Shoju.